What's going on, guys? Blazing here. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a wonderful day, and thank you for joining me on another raid Shadow Legends video. All right, we are now going into secret room number six of Doom Tower Hard for rotation two of Eternal Dragon. And this one is going to be not a pain in the butt, but a little difficult for most players to achieve, right? Because it is void champions only, uh, and it's epic void champions. So you can't use legendaries, you can't use rares. Um, I have seen this being done and cheesed with five Broadmas, uh, and that's not what we're going to do here today. I'm going to basically show you a composition of how you should build your team, right? Um, it, it, you don't need to use the specific champions that I currently have, but the champions that I currently am going to be spotlighting are champions that you will be able to use both in the early game, mid game, late game, and partially into the end game, right? So let's get into the run. Right, so we've got secret room number six for rotation two of the Doom Tower, Eternal Dragon. Now, this is void champions only, right? Um, epic void champions only. So this is going to be very hard to try to accomplish um, right off the bat, right? We're talking, you need to have some pretty good uh, rosters. Now, the first champion that I actually want to use is going to be Broadma. Broadma is an in-game fusion. Uh, you can basically do it with, you know, five copies of him. Uh, I have seen it done. The gear, you know, <laughs> do you really want to try to max out five Broadmas? Um, no, I have two, and that's just because I'm wasteful with my resources. Next up, uh, we're going to use Inquisitor Shamil. Inquisitor Shamil is actually very solid at keeping uh, enemies down, right? Uh, we'll keep them CC'd with the fear. Uh, so we, we should have no problems. Plus, he's got a, an aura for Doom Tower, right? We're going to bring in Godseeker Neri. She's going to help us stay alive. Now, if you have somebody else that could come in, you're more than welcome to bring those in as opposed to Godseeker. Gala is actually a very strong champion to bring in. So is um, Cardinal, right? There's a lot of solid champions. Um, just when I, show, when I showcase these teams, it's more about showing you the setup of what you want to bring in rather than the specific champions, right? So we're going to bring in our Guard Seeker and Eerie. Next up, we're going to bring in our Skull Crown. Skull Crown is kind of like the best champion for this, um, especially in the build that we have before. It's definitely worth it, right? And then last but not least, we're going to bring in Silar. Silar is going to bring in that turn meter manipulation. We're going to bring in a decreased speed, decreased accuracy. So we're going to have some fun with it. Now, let's go ahead and start the run. Uh, again, it's going to be full auto from the start. I'm not putting an AI setup on it. It's really up to you if you really wanted to, but I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to let this play out, and then I will be back at the end of this.
two minutes, 39 seconds, not even long enough for me to play a full song. Um, 114 turns, not bad, pretty easy room, right? As long as you can have the champions. Now, again, the Broadmoors can do it with five Broadmoors at like level 50. They're all going to keep reviving each other and, you know, increasing turn meter as long as you haven't built with some sort of accuracy, you should be fine. Um, if you really want to go down that route, if not, you know, void champions, this room particularly pretty easy to clear. So let me share some of the builds with you guys. All right. First up is my Inquisitor Shamel. Now he is basically built for my arena team. Um, I did a showcase on him already, but the build that we currently have him with has two crit damage sets. Um, really don't need um, savage gear or cruel gear because he already ignores the defense, right? So let's talk about stats. You got him built at 5.7k attack, 210 speed, 102 crit rate, 370 crit damage. I know it's disgusting. Um, we don't have any accuracy or resistance. Let's talk about booking situation. Do you need him booked? Honestly, if you can book the A2, which is his powerhouse nuke, you should be fine. The A1, it is what it is. Phantom Touch is what we did take for him. Now, as for Masteries, we actually went down and took Flawless Execution. I do know that if you're using currently an arena, you can use him with Helm Smasher instead. It's really up to you. We did take Blood Shield. We did take Cycle of Violence. We did also take Ruthless Ambush along with Shield Breaker. Again, this is more of an arena build, right? We did also take Retribution along with Cycle of Revenge and Delay of Death. All right, let's talk about Sylar. Now, Sylar is one of those champions that is very versatile for a lot of areas in the game, right? Uh, especially Faction Wars. Doom Tower Wave Clearing, being able to decrease turn meter and put a decrease speed on there is actually very solid. So what did we do? We have her built with a stun set. This is her best set. Everything is AOE. So the more you use it, the more of a chance she's going to have to land that stun, right? Let's talk about the build for her. We basically went pure survivability. So we got a build at 45k HP, 2.3k defense, 226 speed. Now we did put some damage into the build, but that is a luxury. If you can't accommodate that then don't worry about it right crit damage we have her at 149 crit rate we have her at 103 and then we need to make sure that we have enough accuracy so we have her built at 379 as for the booking situation do you need her fully booked no uh again everything is aoe if you're putting her in a stun set it doesn't really matter right do they help of course are they needed no right Cruelty is the blessing we did take for her. Again, she is all AoE, so it makes perfect sense. Now, as for Masteries, what did we do here? Well, if you really, really wanted to, to push out some damage, you could go down and take War Master. We did not. We focused more on a CC build. So we did take Eagle Eye. We did also take Master Hexer along with Evil Eye. We did also take Laura Steel and Swarm Smiter. We did take Methodical along with Killstreak. We did also take Cycle of Violence, we did take Wrath of the Slain, and we did take Ruthless Ambush. Let's talk about the queen of AoE and nukes, Skullcrown. Skullcrown, again, is another perfect candidate for a stun set when you have her in the late game, right? Uh, to be quite honest, most of the end game players aren't even using her, but for places like this and for places like um, your Faction Wars, she is going to be great in a stun set. Now, let's talk about how we want to build her. Counterattack accessories are going to be her best in slot. As for stats, we did currently build her as a nuker, right? Not in Savage, but it does help. 5.7k attack, 202 speed. Usually, you want to try, you know, having them in Savage when you're going to build them as a nuke. 100% crit rate. 239 crit damage we don't care about accuracy or resistance stun set isn't going to be landing based on our accuracy as for skills we have her fully booked do you need a fully booked if you're using her in a stun set just for this no cruelty is what we did take for her as well and as for masteries we did go ahead and we take helm smasher because it is an arena build we did take kill streak along with methodical we did take bring it down along with cycle of violence 
And then as for the defense tree, we did take Retribution along with Delay of Death and Resurgent. Godseeker Neri. All right, so she is the queen for Sand Devils Necropolis. I have recently retired mine. You can see she's been very worn out. Uh, we are no longer using her on Sand Devils. We're going to start using her somewhere else. Uh, let me know in the comments down below where you might want to see her. But we do have her currently built with a regeneration set and immortal set, right? We do have her built with 73k HP, 4.7k defense, 260 speed. You don't care about crit rate or crit damage, resistance and accuracy. It's really up to you what you're gonna uh, what else you're gonna use it for. If you're just using it for Sandoval, you don't need it, right? Booking situation. If you have a Godseeker Neri, you're gonna wanna book her. She does benefit from books, cooldown reduction, um, healing increase. It, it, it just it's worth it, right? Trust me. Let's talk about masteries. Now, these masteries are specifically tuned for sand devils. You could essentially go down the offensive support um, if you really were using it for clan boss, but right now that's not what we're doing. So we do have Elixir of Life. We do have Spirit Haste. We do have Merciful Aid along with Healing Savior and Lay on Hands along with Steadfast. We did take Harvest Despair. We also did take Delay of Death. We did take Bloodthirst along with Shadow Heal. We did take Blast Proof. We did take Rejuvenation along with Tough Skin. All right, so let's talk about Broadma. Broadma is an in game permanent fusion, right? He is one of those guys that we use to basically make sure that our fusions are completed. Uh, I can't tell you how many copies I've fed of him so far, but, um, you know, if they were allowing us to empower him, I definitely put a little more work and investment in him. So we did build him with a double immortal and defiance set, right? Counterattack accessories are not needed. It just happens to be on here. Honestly, if you can put cleansing accessories on it, probably better off. Let's talk about stats. 63k HP, roughly 3.1k defense, 251 speed. You don't care about crit rate or crit damage. 4 or 1 resistance. We do use them on our faction war teams, so we want to make sure that we're not getting debuffed. As for accuracy, if you really want to take advantage of the A1, then you could put it in. I don't need to. I wouldn't suggest so. The freeze is not going to do a lot. Um, booking situation, we do have him fully booked. Do you need him fully booked? It does help. Again, if you're not using him for anything else, like clan boss or something else, more a little more specific or niche, don't worry about the books, right? Chainbreaker is what we did take for him. Let's talk about masteries. We don't have any. If you need them, you could definitely go down, take Oppressor. You could definitely take um, Spirit Haste along with Lore of Steel with Cycle of Magic. You can definitely take Rapid Response along with Shield Barrier and Steadfast. Uh, and then you could go straight down the Defense Tree and you could take Tough Skin along with Blast Proof. You could go ahead and take Resurgent along with, uh, not this one. You want to take Lay of Death along with Retribution and take Deterrence. There it is, guys. Uh, secret room number six. Pretty easy, right? The team is... I mean, I can't say free to play, right? I really can't because voids are going to be hard and a pain. Um, but again, the easiest and most free to play team you could use is just fusing five Rodmas. Um, Inquisitor Shamel is going to be, you know, one of those powerhouses that you bring in. And then everything else is just keeping CC'd, right? So Scylar and Skullcrown are just going to keep them in the stun sets, keep them everybody else CC'd and not being able to take a turn. Because again, our Inquisitor is built kind of squishy. So hopefully this video helped, guys. If it did, consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, much love, much appreciation. Be safe, be well, be good to each other. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.